What's up, sons? It's Blind God with Simon Tech once again, and today I am bringing you a review of the G5400 from Intel. It's part of their new Pentium Gold line, which basically just distinguishes the Pentiums that would go in a typical chipset on a motherboard like a Z370 or H110, so on, from the ones that are in like the mobile options so your laptops and so on and so forth at least that's what i can tell the difference is so far with that naming scheme it's called pentium gold it doesn't really mean anything special but we're going to talk about some of the synthetic benchmarks and my thoughts on you know if it's something that's viable for either your mining rig or even a gaming rig uh, as far as budget goes so stick around for all of that Welcome back. So the Pentium Gold G5400 is a dual core four thread processor. So by that I mean that it's dual core, two physical cores, and because of the hyper threading it has two additional uh, threads there. Now it's going to be clocked at 3.7 gigahertz with no option for turbo boost and no overclocking ability because it's not a K series or any of those anniversary series Pentium. So unfortunately you're going to be stuck at 3.7 gigahertz. Now you can overclock with the block overclock and if you do that you can get a mild performance boost but it's going to be stuck at around 102.7 and that seems to be a limit on the motherboard side i'm not sure if there's another motherboard i could test with other than this asrock z370 that would allow me to go higher on that block overclock with that also i had the HyperX savage memory in here it comes factory at 2400 megahertz that overclocked no problem to 2666 uh, on itself so basically we were at peak performance for Intel in case you guys aren't really clear on that while on Ryzen going all the way up to like 3200 megahertz or even higher the Infinity Fabric scales the performance of the processor with the faster speed memory on the Intel side it's negligible performance gains CPU wise with anything over 2666 so getting right around that's going to be about perfect and what I would recommend that's going to be the most cost effective for any Intel CPU along with you know just performance to that cost now moving on from there it only has four megabytes of cache L3 so if you're going to be looking at putting this in a mining rig for example and just primarily obviously to power the mining rig with all the GPUs because it's the best budget option on the series right now you want to keep in mind that if you're going to be mining Crypto Knight with it in the background as well, that because of the cache limitations on this, you would only be able to use one of those CPU threads for your Crypto Knight Heavy. For Crypto Knight, you can use two of those CPU threads, and then for Crypto Knight Lite, you could use all four. So, of course, I'd recommend mining something like Turtle Coin with those four, and that's just because you want to use all of the cores available to you if possible. So you're going to be looking at Crypto Knight Lite. That aside, let's talk about some of the synthetic benchmarks. On the Cinebench score for multi-threaded, it scored at its peak with the block overclock applied 409. Now, if you have that not applied, it was at like 403. So like I said, negligible performance gains, you're talking about a 1% gain by doing that overclock, nothing great. You do get over 400 though by overclocking the memory to 2666. Keep all of that in mind. The single threaded was pretty impressive, especially for the price point of this processor. And on Cinebench, it scored a 151, which is very significant when you consider the fact that it's clocked lower than some of its Ryzen competitors, like the Ryzen 3 1200, and it's priced lower than it, and it beats it out in single threaded score. So that IPC strength for Intel is still there even on their lower end products that don't necessarily have the highest per core overclock or per core clock I should say not overclock moving on to Geekbench 4 the multi-core score was 9,354 while the single threaded score was 4,754 once again beating out some of its rising competition in that single core not in the multi-threaded of course and it's important to keep in mind that these aren't really competitors either in uh, any day i would take for example a ryzen 3 1200 over this g5400 but coming in at the price point of 60 dollars which at this point last i checked is like 
30 to 40 dollars on average cheaper than you can pick up a ryzen 3 1200 this is not even really in competition with said previous processor from the amd team now moving on to the user bench we got into the 72nd percentile with a superior single threaded score so fully expected there and that wraps up all of the synthetic benchmarks that i performed on the g5400 now i have a gtx 1050 installed in this system and depending on where price points come in and some of the new cards coming out we might shift around and try to do some different testing here and there overall i'm pretty impressed with it it, it does deliver a snappy browser every day kind of uh, performance as well as it does have that built-in iGPU while it's not a very powerful one if you're looking for just a basic PC to set up browse the internet and do some very basic gaming and so on you could get into you know one of these with one of the uh, cheaper motherboards for really really low cost we're talking below for a total system two hundred dollars here and getting decent performance out of it it's going to handle other things like outlook and excel and so on very well as as well so you're not going to have to worry about any of that we're finally to the point these days where you can build a pc or just a general pc if you do it yourself for so cheap you're not really going to have to worry about having access to the internet and all of the things that the pc platform can provide now talking about thermals is always important however i didn't actually go into much detail on testing any of the thermals on this particular processor because it is still on that coffee lake and we do know that coffee lake gets hot we do know that with that also it doesn't actually have any solder between the IHS and the die. Now this processor is no different and it's a very budget processor. However, instead of packing all the cores in it that say like the 8700K has in it, means that and the lower TDP means that it really doesn't run hot at all and seeing that you can't overclock it much uh, of anything uh, and overvolting it would be pointless that there's not really going to be a need here to upgrade your cpu cooler yes the intel cpu cooler that comes shipped with it is not good however it's sufficient for what we're trying to accomplish which is have a pc up and running the most expensive part of all of this is going to be your memory as well as of course your storage and hopefully with all those class action lawsuits going in for price fixing from the memory manufacturers that will be solved here by the end of the year i hope this answers all the questions on the g5400 that you may have of course if you have any additional ones please let me know in the comment section below we are going to be testing here shortly the new devour dlid tool and the reason i got this one even though i have the rocket tool is well there were only two left in the u.s and they finally came back on sale so i bought one of them and this should work with my ryzen 5 2400g so we're gonna go in uh guns ablazing on that 2400g and try to pop the top to cool it down it is already liquid cooled but any more performance we can get out of it would be awesome so if you're interested in that be sure to follow i did want to apologize i said i was going to start the water cooling how to and then i flew to new york wednesday so i didn't really have the time to do that i know that i said that i would work on that wednesday unfortunately wednesday instead i was flying to new york so we didn't get that done if uh if that's something that's super important to you of course i understand and, and i apologize and we'll get to talking about it here shortly i have all of the slides and all of the information set up and ready and the steps that i want to do it in uh, such as what tools you want to buy and what kind of fittings do what and so on and so forth and hopefully we'll get to that but until then i'll see you next tuesday